How are you guys doing? I have this really big video on men's leather bracelets. It's hopefully coming out tonight or tomorrow. I'm almost done editing it, so you guys have been waiting. Thank you for your patience. In the meantime, um, I'm just gonna go over this real quick because I just got back to the city where my booth is from my home city, and I saw the sales that I didn't make. This is the guy, this is not an employee of mine. This is not me. This is the guy next to me who was watching my booth because I needed someone to just cover for me for a couple of days, not weekends, weekdays, slow, late summer weekdays. And the guy next to me was only gonna take a sale if somebody really bothered him. Hey, I wanna buy something. He, he was not doing anything to try to sell. And I came back and I looked at the numbers and I wanna show you guys, cause this is shocking. So I'm gonna say again, I said this in a, one of the first videos, you can go all the way to the bottom of the videos tab find like over a year ago there's two kinds of art you could break down people into all different kinds of categories but one way is two time two types there's art you do for you because you love it because it's an expression of who you are and you want to put that into the world and then there's art that you do to make money to sell now hopefully those two overlap and you manage to find the most pure expression of yourself is also what people want to pay an amount that will support your dreams. But that's very rare to find that pure vein. Like usually there's there's an overlap, but you have to make art that isn't your favorite kind of art if you want to make money. Or you have to accept not making money if you want to make the most pure art. And I've done both, all the way from one extreme to the other. Doing stuff I absolutely hated, because it made money and I had to pay bills and doing stuff I absolutely loved knowing that it wouldn't make a penny. Um, but most has been in the middle, thank goodness. Most has been stuff I do enjoy quite a bit. I might have to modify it a little, but that also makes money. And if you're gonna do that, you have to make what people ask for. You have to make what people are buying, what you see people are interested in. And so it's adapt, 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 adapt. And what I'm gonna show you is, eight years ago, I didn't make rings at all. Earrings were my number one seller. Earrings killed in my particular venues, and then necklaces, and then lastly, bracelets. Um, but I kept seeing these guys making these cool rings, and I said, I gotta learn to make rings. Rings were a little tricky for me. I saw the way they did it. I didn't wanna do it wrong. So ring, rings is the only thing I ever hired another artist to teach me. Everything else, my dad's an art teacher, even though he does more fine art, painting, drawing. But I grew up confident with art, winning art awards when I was a kid. Um, so, you know, I self-taught for most of this jewelry stuff. Um, and then I'd look at a few YouTube videos to get tips. And I had two very cool friends who already knew how to make jewelry, and they both taught me a lot of stuff and I just took it from there and ran with it. It's mostly practice and development. But rings were one thing I wasn't completely sure I was gonna get right and I didn't wanna do it wrong and have somebody with some flimsy ring that wouldn't be on their finger because rings are very specifically sized and um, it's not like a necklace you can just throw it over anybody or earrings you can just hang them from anybody and it doesn't matter the size. Um, so I, uh, um, I actually got this one guy who's a really good wire wrapper and I hired him. I had two apprentices at the time and I hired him to teach the three of us. 75 bucks for about two and a half hours, best investment I ever made. And he showed us how to make rings, and a few other things. After that, boom, I was making a ton of rings. Fast forward eight years later, and let, you, let me show you these numbers. So here's what was sold while I wasn't even present over just three days, weekdays. As you can see, it's rings, 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 rings. And um, this is what a typical day of selling would be like for me about eight years ago. And I remember this well because I would write down all the numbers. And so this, this, is, this is very common. It's almost all earrings that I sold. This is before I even knew how to make a single ring. And this is with me selling my heart out all day long. Fast forward to today, 
This is what sold without me even being there, without me even having an employee selling. This is just the guy next to me taking sales when people really wanted to buy something and they didn't even need anyone to sell to them. Now imagine if I never learned how to make rings and I didn't adapt. The lesson of this entire video is adapt, adapt, adapt. If you want to sell art, if you want to be good at art, if you want to be good at selling, if you want to be successful, if you want all of the above, you are going to have to go through more fails, more failures than successes. Every single failure is, it's just a lesson to teach you exactly where and how to adapt, adapt, adapt. Don't be afraid to adapt. You'll learn, you'll grow, and you'll become a better artist overall, even doing sometimes things you don't want to do, but it stretches you. So don't be afraid. All right, have a great day, guys.